Hello, this is Marlene, and today you might be wondering why I have so many supplies in front of me. It's because we're gonna be trying them out, you know? It's a new year, it's a new me, I get to explore new things, and that includes new art materials that have been laying around my house for so long. And so, for reference, I usually paint with gouache. I've been doing gouache landscapes for like a year now. And today, we'll be doing one painting slash drawing every single day for five days using one different art material. I have pastels here, I'll have colored pencils, acrylics, watercolors, and digital art. And to make this even more fun, since I usually just paint landscapes, we'll be doing uh, different scenes that I usually don't paint. So we can do still life, studies, anything that I want to explore and I haven't had the chance to do so in the past. That's what we are gonna be doing every single day. Let's get to it. I'll see you soon. For the pastel piece, I decided to draw this flower arrangement picture that I took a couple months ago. And I always thought that it looked very nice. And it reminded me of the things that you had to draw in art class for still life. They'd place like a pot and a couple flowers or something, and then you had to draw. And so I think as a beginner to pastels, this would be a good exercise for me to test out the colors, the textures, and see what I can make with them. One of the things that was difficult for me when creating this piece was trying to get all the details in, especially when it's a still life. And I couldn't quite do that with the edges of the pastels. I didn't know how to. And so I had to go along and figure things out and kind of focus more on creating the right shapes and getting the right colors, shadows to reflect the flowers or the object rather than focus on all the details. My favorite part about using these pastels is being able to blend them with my finger and create this soft effect. And I had so much fun creating contrast, contrasting the hard edges of the pastels with the softness when they're blended. And I think that's what actually drew me into buying this set of pastels is seeing all these drawings with these kind of textures. And I also wanted to try these out. Hello! It is currently day two of painting with different mediums and today we're gonna do colored pencils. Yesterday I did pastels and this is what I managed to do. This took me about like six to eight hours. I finished at 2 a.m. and I regretted my decision to do such a big thing. Uh, in one day, so today I'll scale it back down and try to do a smaller drawing because I don't want to sleep that late anymore. Anyways, it was very fun. I had so much fun doing this one. It's like like when you were a kid and then you had like all the crayons and then you just blended with your fingers. I had a lot of fun. My fingers were kind of dry, but I, I'm pretty sure it's because I was doing something wrong. One of the things about pastels is that I usually paint with gouache. So I mix the colors in the pans, but for pastels, you mix the colors on the paper. So you never know, like when you're laying down the colors, you don't know if you're laying down the right thing and you just hope that you're mixing the right thing together on the paper. But that was definitely very fun. And I enjoyed drawing with the pastels and I'll probably pick them up in the future. Anyways, today we're doing colored pencils. It's been a while since I've drawn with colored pencils. I've done them like years ago. I did like colored portraits and stuff like that, but I haven't touched them. So today that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do a recreation of the Ophelia painting in colored pencil. So we're just gonna do a study and also it'll be fun. Okay, so let's get started. I actually love doing studies, so I was quite happy with 
being able to like sneak this one into the video I should do it more often, I don't get to do it usually but I love being able to study the work of a painter that I admire because it's one thing to look at the painting and you know, you, you, see, you see it and you're in awe but it's another thing to try to recreate it and try to get into the artist's mind and see how they layered the colors, how they created the composition and what makes their final painting so good. And so by trying to recreate it yourself, you kind of get a little bit of their wisdom and you get to incorporate that into your future work as well. So I highly recommend you trying this out if you have any paintings that you really like my favorite part about using colored pencils is probably the way you're able to layer so much and all the layers still peek through so you can always see kind of all the colors that you used and at the end you can choose to seal it in if you want to so you can create that smooth effect that I used for the face for example or you can decide to just leave the layer as is and then all the colors kind of peek out and that's what I did for the background. This piece also made me love the swamp green so much. I never knew I could like swamp green or chartreuse green so much. But I ended up using this so much because the colors was in the piece in the first place. But I even decided to use like a neon chartreuse green in the end to do the borders. And it kind of made everything pop. And I love especially how the teal also pops in this piece. Good morning! Can you see my breath? <sighs> you can see my breath! It's so cold here! Yesterday, it didn't work out. I said I would do a smaller drawing. It is smaller. But it took also the same amount of time. Um, here is the final drawing. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I'm okay with drawing faces, but it's not my forte. Definitely a challenge, but I enjoyed it, you know? I was wondering how I was gonna do the backgrounds with colored pencils, but it turned out so fun. I actually enjoyed drawing the background the most. Very fun! I like colored pencils. I forgot how fun it was to mix the colors. The only thing that I have against colored pencil is that it takes longer than like a painting, because a painting you can just do a large brush stroke, like <laughs> with a large paintbrush, but with the colored pencil you have to do it all by yourself, so it kind of takes longer. So even though I chose a smaller piece, it still took like eight hours so today I'm not doing this again I'm gonna do a smaller painting with acrylic today we're doing acrylic I have this set of acrylics and we will be painting a simple scene from Studio Ghibli so it's gonna be like a food shot of the ramen bowl from Ponyo I never draw like still life that much I just draw landscapes most of the time so it's gonna be fun and it shouldn't take as much time as the other paintings. So let's get to it. I'm freezing here. This piece was actually more difficult for me than I thought 
because everything is so clean that if you make errors, so if your line work is not clean, then it's very apparent and there isn't a lot of room for mistakes. And so with acrylics, I had to layer on the color multiple times so that it would be opaque and clean so that required that at each layer, the line work was clean. And I definitely need more practice in that aspect. But I had a lot of fun creating the food in this and adding the steam in the end and creating this kind of translucent effect. It was definitely very satisfying to look at and it also made me hungry while painting. We are back! Today is day 4. Yesterday I did acrylics. This is how it ended up. I drew the, the ramen bowl. I think the thing that was the most complicated for this media is how fast it dries. It dries so fast and I had, the, I had difficulty like being precise with the paintbrush, especially when you have to do like line art kind of here, you need like precise shapes. It was kind of hard for me to create these exact shapes when the paint was like hardening so fast because with gouache it's a lot smoother and creamier and then you can... I also had better brushes for gouache than acrylic. I just had to work with whatever I had. I think it ended up decent. It looks, it looks yummy, I guess. <laughs> One thing that I do like about acrylic is that the colors stay vibrant for a long time and for gouache, the color usually fades after it dries and you let it sit for a long time but this one, for acrylics, the colors stay very vibrant and I like that about acrylics You just gotta work very fast and you gotta spray water on your pan every time you try to paint but definitely an interesting experience. Today is also day four, which means we're doing digital art for the day. I have limited knowledge of how to make digital art. Like traditional media, you can kind of transfer your skills from one traditional media to another, like layering, how the color is going to come out. But with digital art, you kind of have to, um, you're kind of on a different level. You have to figure out what brushes to use. You have to figure out um, the textures, how to get the appropriate textures you want. And it's gonna be another interesting experience. I'm gonna watch some tutorials on how to layer, how to uh, do compositions, and how to color. We're gonna see how that turns out. For my digital piece, I took this reference photo from Pinterest mostly for the composition rather than the colors because the colors didn't end up as I wanted so I just went off with my own color combos at the end but I took the reference to find where the shadows and the light was and try to replicate this with my own color combo so I do think that references are very useful in that aspect if you need help for composition or just to see how lighting works and then you can try to mimic this in the color combos that you would like. You can see that I'm iterating through multiple compositions when I'm doing this piece and it's mostly because I didn't plan correctly ahead, um, which I should have, but digital art is very forgiving in the sense that you have the undo and you can layer as much as you want. So I took advantage of that and just tried different compositions that I normally wouldn't do with traditional media because you can't just layer a bunch of things on paper and you can't undo. So I, it was very freeing to just try out a lot of composition and see what works and what didn't work. Good morning! It is day 5 today. Yesterday was day 4 digital art. This is how my piece turned out. It was it was pretty difficult and I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I was kinda lost. My layering is so wrong. I don't think people should be looking at how I layer. I was doing some messed up things. I had, I had a lot of times where I had a certain composition in my mind and I would try it out. And then it wouldn't look good so I would erase and then I would go over it and then try another composition. The thing that 
made me struggle the most was figuring out what brushes to use, what colors to use, how to get the right saturation, and also having a good composition, but this is just a general skill you can have <laughs> in any art form as well. I didn't have to clean up after anything, so that was fun. I took six hours maybe, I don't think it should take this long, but also be aware that I was figuring things out along the way, so it was quite fun. I might do this again in the future. Today also is day five, so it is the last day and I'm wearing something themed because we're doing watercolors. I actually painted with watercolors a long time ago and I did a lot of paintings. I actually started painting with watercolors but I stopped for a while because I used gouache instead. And so we will see today if my skills for watercolors are still here. I have this paint palette that I used to use and oh, yeah, let's get started. For my watercolor piece, I decided to draw a flower bouquet which was very nostalgic for me because I actually started watercolor doing these kinds of pieces and so it was fun to revisit it for this one and see what has changed. I love using watercolors to paint flowers because I feel like the texture that watercolor has on the paper reflects the petals so well, like it looks so delicate and the different kinds of gradients and washes that I can create with watercolors are just so pretty when I do them on flowers. I didn't end up using the large watercolor pan for this painting, I just used two smaller travel watercolor palettes and it did the job. I think the pigments of these were so good, so that's why I just stuck to these palettes. I also got to use my shimmery watercolor set in the end. I added some gold accents on the flowers and on the flower stems and I think it just makes it all look more magical and ties it all together. I'm back and we finished day five which was watercolor. It's pretty tiny but it is mighty because there's a lot of details in it and technically this took me <laughs> more than a day because the first day I couldn't get my idea right. I had to restart a lot and you know watercolor is not very forgiving so I just had to start a new painting when I screwed up my first one but we managed to do this one in the end. It took me like one day and a half. I really like how this turned out. I used some shimmery watercolor from a watercolor set that I had and I really like the effect that it gives. And with that, we have reached the end of the challenge. It was very fun. I think I used the word fun a lot. It was cool to not have any pressure to make it perfect or make it postable for Instagram. I just had to make something. <laughs> that was the only goal I had. And so that was very refreshing for 2022. I hope to take some of that energy and challenge it into my future work. Quite a good start for 2022. Let me know what are some media you would like to try out, if there's anything that you would like to experiment with this year. So thank you for making it till the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you very soon. Bye!